Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text that engages us this morning is the gospel reading from Matthew chapter 5. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. On All Saints Day, my mind always goes back to my family roots in Frankenmuth, Michigan. The church my ancestors helped build, St. Lawrence. You know, I have many family memories inside of that sanctuary. Festive Easter services, baptisms, weddings, and of course, funerals. You know, the Kern family was always, always sat on the left side of the church, near the front, as those were usually the only seats left by the time they got there. You know, there's a stained glass window there on that side of the church. That's particularly important to me because I know that on the other side of that window, as you go out the doors of the church to the side there, is a cemetery where many of my relatives have been laid to rest. No longer late to church, as they uh, are resting right there on site. The large stained glass window there portrays the many beginnings. Uh, that are appreciated by the members of St. Lawrence, from the birth of Christ, C.F.W. Walther, and the beginning of our synod, uh, to the founding pastors and the building and founding of the church, to St. Lawrence himself, the saint for which the church is named, this, and the story of how he gave all the church treasury to the poor and angered the state and found himself on a burning grill, which is all depicted there above his head in the colorful glass exhibit. I'm sure many of you have memories of being in a church where the saints are displayed in similar ways. Tall and regal with the instrument of their death above or below them. You know, one of my seminary professors, Dr. David Schmidt, shared one of his memories uh, from a church that he used to pastor in Chicago. He said, down each side aisle are stained glass windows, one window for each apostle, and underneath them is their shield, and above them is the instrument of their death, but through them, the church is illumined on Sunday morning. Those who sit near the saints are colored in blues and reds and gold, similar to the way you see the, the light coming into our sanctuary on Sunday mornings. In a strange way, the, the saints in the windows help us to see the saints in the pews. They color our lives in a different light. In a sense, this is what happens on All Saints Day. We, we remember the saints who have gone before us, and this memory of the saints illumines who we are. You know, the difficulty with remembering the saints is that we can often look at them rather than through them. You know, for most people, the word saint evokes images of people who have done great, good things in the world. They care for lepers, perform miracles, and give witness to all the while they are being beheaded or burned at the stake. You know, because of that, when people here talk about saints, they, they tend to stand reverently at a distance and, and just simply look at the windows. But our appointed reading from Matthew's gospel, however, changes our perspective. It invites us to look through the saints and see Jesus, the one who blesses them, who does good for them, and then does good through them in the world. In the Beatitudes, we hear Jesus with, with a radical word of blessing, making us saints in a different kingdom that is breaking forth in the world through him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus says. And suddenly things change. I mean, Jesus not is in, he's not in some temple uh, teaching or he's not in some synagogue. He's out there in the world teaching on a mountain. 
And while he's out there, there this an, an indiscriminate crowd starts to surround him. Some are poor, others are mourning, some are struggling for righteousness, others are fighting for peace. Yet on this day, on, on this mountain, it becomes a sacred place. And these people hear themselves in a new light. They hear themselves to be holy, set apart by God, set apart for God. And the Beatitudes still sound strange when spoken today. Now they call our attention to people that we would otherwise overlook. And even if we do happen to see them, we have the arrogance to look upon them with pity because they do not fit the categories of someone that we would consider to be blessed. You know, we use the phrase, I'm blessed. You're blessed. And often it's because we see evidence of good things happening in our lives. New job, new car, new house, new baby. But the ones who are, are burying their spouse, their child, one dying of cancer, the children wondering why their parents aren't together anymore, the, the, the husband and wife that can't seem to get pregnant no matter how badly they want kids. You know, we don't think to use that phrase. Oh, you're blessed. But through the Beatitudes, Jesus shows us just how much we need God's radical grace to reorient our lives. And those who mourn, who long for the kingdom, who struggle for peace, who are persecuted in the faith, these are the ones God blesses. Not because of anything they did, but because of what God in Christ has done for them. And Jesus takes upon himself this world's darkness, its sin, and God's wrath, that he might rise as the light of the world, revealing God's grace to all who have eyes to see it. How? By shining through saints. People who, in Christ, are holy in their helplessness, sainted in their suffering. God's people are illumined by Jesus the light of the world. So in All Saints Day, you know, these Beatitudes help us to see Christ at work there in that time, but also here now, even in our pews, you know, blessing those who are gathered. You know, the mom who has her bag of carrots and coloring books, struggling to keep her children quiet and praying that one day her husband will come to church with her. The widow twisting her wedding ring, thinking of her late husband, wondering when the pain will become bearable again. The one struggling with alcohol and depression, wondering whether he even belongs here. You know, nothing would set up these people apart in our world. No one would be looking to, to build and craft a stained glass window of them. But Jesus, in grace, calls us and enables us to see more. A peacemaker, a mourner, the poor in spirit. All were blessed by God. And Jesus didn't say, well, don't worry, this too shall pass, blessings are coming, pick your chin up. No, Jesus dared to say, they are blessed. Now. Not then. Now. Not because of their strength, but because his strong word brings light into darkness, brings life from death. When Jesus breaks into our lives and takes every one of our moments to the cross, where he receives the judgment. He receives the punishment. He receives the condemnation. He experiences even the darkness of death, all so that the light of his cross and his empty tomb might shine and be part of every moment of your life. On All Saints Day, the Beatitudes remind us how God in Christ claims people. Now, people who are frail, humble, poor, mourning. God claims them and makes them his own. He washes them in baptism. He feeds them at his supper. He claims them and gathers them into his church. 
A gathering of people that extends beyond time and space because we gather and worship around the one who reigns over it all. As you listen one more time to the Beatitudes, I want you to think about what parts of your life are illumined. What people do you now remember to be blessed by God? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. As you remember, sing in praise. Cry out in prayer. And remember and love the work of Christ who blesses and who shines through his saints today. The one who did great things for you in order that he may do incredible things through you in this world. In the name of Jesus, amen.